Welcome back. The PLC Professor presents How to Program a PLC, Volume 1, uh, Part 5 or 1.4. Uh, you notice the color changed a little bit. Typical of our training materials, the basics manual is navy blue, the advanced is dark green, and the um, advanced 2 is red. So when you see these titles on YouTube or on the disc. If you see blue, it's basic. If you see green, it's um, a little advanced. And if you see red, it's more advanced. So we'll probably do one more and make it red and we'll do kind of a simulation. So in this section, what we're going to do is tidy up uh, some things that we didn't finish before. And we're going to do the single push button application which really is not basic. So looking at what you had when we left the only thing that might be different here is the safety photo eye. I think I forgot to add that in to the logic when I was switching things around. Also notice that I'm back to using bits from the binary file B3 instead of using I.O. Since most of you probably don't have a PLC to work with and you're using the simulator, which if you don't have the simulator then you need to go to YouTube PLC Professor channel and watch the video on creating a simulator. And you can create this logic you see right here and actually run it. In the next section, the more advanced section, uh, I'm going to show you how to create a simulator for the motor. So you don't have to toggle anything but a single button. Nonetheless, so uh, looking at this diagram, if we push the go up button, it energizes the control relay up, which closes two contacts, one to bypass the go up button and the other to energize the motor up. Well, why have the control relay up that closes a contact that turns on the motor up? Why not just combine those? So we'll take these two and move them down to here and eliminate those two rungs of logic. So notice that we eliminated the control relay up and control relay down and combine them. Now there's a few more changes we have to make yet so don't uh, run off to the store to buy your parts. Also we wanted to get rid of the two stop uh, instructions. There's really just one bit that we use B3 3 slash 7. So we'll combine that into one because that condition or that per permissive permit permissive I call them conditions and sometimes I call them permissives. That condition is common to both rungs so why not just move it into one rung. So you have a single stop bit that clears the command to motor up or motor down. Now notice that this used to be control relay up. Well this is still control relay up. That's a problem. Because remember that the instruction that is in parallel with the go up button or the go up bit, that has to seal that in because you're only going to toggle the go up bit. In other words, that's like a momentary push button. You push and let go and you expect the motor to keep running in the up direction. So we also need to change those. Okay, so we replace uh, every place where there was the control relay up and control relay down with motor up and motor down. And we're still not done. Here we have a couple more that we have to replace. Because you remember neither up or down uh, was we were using those to start our timer and to provide garage lights. So make sure you replace them there as well. Okay. Now this is the more advanced. That's why we start out with a green title. Remember I pr 
promised you more or less that we would do a single push button. So if you look at this rung that has branches in it, we have a the push button, single push button, and then next we have a one shot rising, meaning that this instruction executes on the rising edge of whatever is to the left. So when everything to the left of the OSR is true, then the rung that far it goes from false to true, that's the rising edge, false to true. A one-shot instruction is true for one program scan, which means if everything to the left is true, the first scan that it's true, the instruction is true, and then the rest of the rung is executed. However, on the next scan, everything to the left might still be true, but it's already been true for one scan, so the OSR instruction is now false, and the rest of the rung is false. So, we have basically three sets of conditions there. One for stop, one for go up, and one for go down. So if you look at the stop, it basically says if the motor up is on, or the motor down is on, then stop. Remember, we want to use this the push button as the only push button in our operator interface. So, if the motor up bit is on or the motor down bit is on, then stop. Now, can both of those be on at the same time? Absolutely not. Remember in your logic that you have interlocks, so you can't motor up and motor down simultaneously. Let's drop down one branch. If we're not energizing motor up and we're not mo energizing motor down and the up limit switch is not made, meaning the door is not up, but you're not telling it to go up or down, then go up. So regardless of what position the door is in, if it's all the way down, if it's part way up, if, you, if it was going down and you stopped it halfway down, when you hit the button again, it's going to go up. That's what you want. Now, if you want to write some more logic so it continues to go down when you hit the button again after you stopped it halfway down, we could add some logic that remembers which direction it was going when you stopped it. Matter of fact, we might do that. Not in this section. Maybe we'll make another... We'll, we'll have V... 1.5 or V1.6 and we'll add a little logic that remembers what direction it was going when you stop. So the first branch there uh, sets the stop bit. The second branch sets the go up bit and then the third branch if the limit switch in the up direction or the door is at the top of its travel and it's tripped that switch B332 then that would be true and then we would want the door to go down when we hit the button. Now I threw in the down limit switch as well. In other words the up limit switch is um, on which means the door is all the way up and I added the down switch in as a safety as a preventive in case the switch is broken. So all we need is the first condition there, B332 true of on. If the door is all the way up, then it can go down. Which means with this logic and a single push button, the only way you can go down is if the door is all the way up. And then the last branch is a bit of trickery, a little bit of magic. Uh, not when you think about it, it's not. But I'm using the unlatch bit to turn off the push button. Think about how you're going to use this. You're going to toggle B3310, the push button. You don't really have a push button. You're going to use your mouse. You're going to mouse over B3310 and you're going to right click and then select toggle bit. When you do that it turns on that bit in memory. 
to save you the trouble of right clicking again to toggle it back off so you can toggle it back on again we use the logic to untoggle what you just did which means that B3310 when you toggle it on it is going to turn right back off within this rung of logic but not before it decides whether to stop, go up, or go down. And really those are your only three choices. Remember you had three push buttons before. You had up, down, and stop. You still have three except that it's facilitated with a single push button. So if you were going to read this logic to your friends at the coffee shop to impress them, actually they'd probably be bored of tears, their eyes would glaze over, and they'd all probably make excuses to get up and get, get more coffee or something. Nonetheless, we'll read it. If the button is pressed, the push button. Now remember that if this was a real application, you would have an I, a file one I address here for a real push button, momentary push button. So if the button is pressed and B336 is zero or off. And the way a one shot works is this. When everything to the left is true, the first scan that it's true, then it will set B336 on. It'll set the instruction true, and then it'll move on into the wrong. So this one shot is only going to be true when it's discovered to, for that bit to be off. It's going to set that bit on and be true and the motor is energized in either direction. So if the motor is running in either direction then set the stop bit. Okay? Or if you push the button and B336 is off meaning it hasn't been visited with the left side true you know, which is the push button. It can set the stop bit, or if it, the motor is not energized in either direction, and it's not up, then set the go up bit. Or if it's not up, or down. I'm sorry, or if it's up and not down. Um, I didn't do that on purpose, so we'll back up here. Okay. Or it's not either energized in either direction, so it's not be told, told to go up or down. The motor's off and it's not up, then set the go up bit to go up. Now if it's already up and not down, remember we added the down switch as a safety, then set the go down bit. And regardless of anything, every time the one shot is true, it's going to clear the push button bit. So it just saves you the trouble. So when we're all done with this, hopefully if you've downloaded the free software from Rockwell Automation and went through the exercise of getting your simulator to work, you can put this code in there and it will execute. Now without a simulator you're going to have to toggle the limit switch bits on and off to simulate the door going up and down. Now in our next section we're going to um, create some logic that will simulate the motor. I think what I'll do in the future is when you order a manual I will try to include some of this logic as a separate document. Uh, the problem with emailing people uh, documents and I don't email anything except off of PLC Professor website would be too 
horrendous an effort to be constantly sending emails out to people. So I will figure out some way to make the logic available um, on the new website. The new website is getting built right now. It might take a month um, to get it done, maybe two months, I don't know. Eventually, you'll be able to find this code on the website or get a download when you purchase a manual off of the website. Either way, you can go through this video, pause, sketch it, and then go enter it into the simulator. Thank you for watching How to Program a PLC, Volume 1.4, which is the fifth segment. Again, if you didn't follow all of this, then you need to back up to some of the more basic videos. And it doesn't hurt to get a copy of the manual, go through the labs, use the simulator, build yourself your own little hardware demo, or download the software and use the simulator. Again, thank you.